Back Jack, JW, and welcome back to the channel. Um, it is the 4th of July, yes, so we got a little something special for you out. Uh, I've brought out all the uh, war guns here, the World War II 1911s, my favorite type of 1911. Uh, as you guys know, you've been around the channel a lot. I am a 1911 fanatic. Uh, it's one of the ones that I always say, I can always use one more. <laughs> But um, anyway, no, uh, the 4th of July, we'd like to, uh, you know, take this moment, uh, remember everybody that served. Um, you know, my grandpa, he fought in World War II. And, you know, it, I wish I would have talked to him a lot more about it than I had uh, done. So, and I think we all feel that way about our, our past uh, family members that had served that great war and everything so but the World war two pistols are my favorite without a doubt so i wanted to take a moment here and uh you know just hey yeah, what a good idea to bring them out and of course uh, i'm always looking for an excuse on this channel to bring out some 1911s right <laughs> uh, but you know like i said for me 1911s uh it doesn't get cooler than the the old school war horse right here and I love the A1. The A1 is my favorite. Uh, the color on these things is just, uh, it has never ever been duplicated. I've never seen the same exact color. Um, they all kind of have a, a different shadow of it. Uh, so like this one here is a very early uh, Colt, a very, very early Colt, uh, 1942, 43-ish uh, maybe. Uh, I did look it up one time and uh, I think that's what I came across. So it's of course, you got all the patent dates on it. That beautiful rampant pony and the inspector mark right there. Really cool uh, mainspring housing. It's got all that checkering on it and everything. So, And then right there, model, uh, the uh, U.S. Army, United States property. Get all that oil out of there. Isn't that cool? Really cool stuff. Uh, this one, I uh, picked this one up some time back, and uh, you know, just I, I saw this at the show, and I saw this uh, sitting there, and I said, you know, I'm not going to be able to to leave <laughs> with without this in my possession. So I did a little bit of trading with the fella, and uh, I I pretty much I knew that this was something that had to go home with me without a doubt and I, I gave him a couple of guns I, I made him an offer he couldn't refuse and I walked away with some cash in pocket too <laughs> not a bad uh, uh, trade-off you know it's got that old-school wide hammer look at that baby uh, something cool in it I got all that look at that inspector mark and stuff like that these things always had like a cool color to them they're kind of weird uh, my good buddy, uh, I carry one. He uh, kind of had a good description of it. It's got a dark olive kind of color, kind of strange. Um, so uh, this one here is really cool. I've had this one in the collection a while too. Uh, this is a Remington Rand. Oh no, I'm sorry. I hear I'm lying to you guys. You know, I've been subscribed here for like what six years? We've been doing this. <laughs> this is an Ithaca. Yes, it's still got a bunch of oil still splattered all over it because that's kind of how I, I keep them. That's I guess for me. Uh, living out a, a place where humidity got to you. Um, but no, this is an Ithaca. This is cool. This is an Ithaca gun company. This was the final one I picked up uh, because this was uh, one that kind of complete the collection and everything with the, uh, of course, with the United States property, um, all that kind of cool stuff on it. Uh, this one here is the Remington Ran. This is the first one I ever got. Wow, that good. Uh, I haven't shot this much. Um, this one here is uh, really, everything is really tight. A good buddy of mine hooked me up with this deal, and I got this. Really cool stuff. Remington Rand. A lot of people will go, oh, that Remington made it. Well, it's a Remington typewriter. Uh, Frank J. Atwood, I believe, is the inspector for these guys here in uh, New York. Syracuse, New York, and Ithaca, New York on that one. But uh, really cool stuff. Look at that. United States property cool cool stuff it's got the later uh, narrow hammer as they later started doing uh, that, that's more correct for that and everything and then of course they are this mainspring housing on these are serrated and everything uh, this last one over here is kind of a, a good example of what the military would do 
this is a union switch and signal uh, at least the upper is or the slide but it's all parkerized the same color um, although the frame is more than likely uh, a leftover from the first war and uh, they just would uh, toss them on here I don't know I've seen a lot of these but this was laying on a table uh, an old man had it and uh, you know I said well let's meet up somewhere <laughs> But uh, it's not a lot of these things, but I'm a, a very proud owner of the, the war guns here. Um, you guys know I'm a 1911 freak. So uh, this to me is having the war guns. This is like the brass ring. Uh, and that's what I mean about that. Uh, for me, as a collector of 1911s, this is, this is the brass ring. Having the World War II pistols. Um, I used to have a World War I pistol. I'd, uh, my buddy has it now. He owns it. Um, he really wanted it, so um, off it went to him in his possession. So, But I also brought out a couple other artifacts that I got. I got this belt and everything. This is cool because look at that. It's even marked 1943 along with the holster uh, 1943. I threw some um, uh, neat's foot oil on this one. Uh, this one's definitely used. Um, as you can see, that when they get used, they they're definitely crusty, cruddy. Um, oh, here, here how can we not pull out the cool canteen? <laughs> That's got uh, 1943 on the bottom of the canteen as well. And then um, we've got this other holster here. It's just more. Uh, I guess you could say this is almost unissued. It's still in good shape. Uh, everything is still intact. Always worried about just you know messing with these things because they're they're historical items. I want to keep them in good shape. And everything. And, uh, this is a Grayton and Knight. Both of these actually are Grayton and Knight uh, leather company. And I have a Boit. It's actually on the wall uh, right behind me. And for those of you that I'll, I'll, I'll take this moment to do a shameless plug. <laughs> uh, if you're not subscribed to Bat Jack JW Radio Show, <laughs> go ahead and subscribe over there. You see a lot of extra stuff and a little bit of uh, other things. A little bit different than the main channel. But uh, anyway, uh, I'd like to thank everybody for subscribing to this channel, uh, keeping it going. Again, this is uh, the anniversary of the channel as well. I've been doing this like six years, I believe. That's if I counted right, six years. <laughs> it's crazy to think. Um, I've been taking care of this channel for six years and producing the videos. And you folks, all 40-some thousand of you have subscribed. And thank you very much. I appreciate it. Don't worry. I won't let anybody change us. We'll keep going the way we are. And uh, stay tuned because, hey. I got something else to show you. It might have something to do with what's in that box.